All right, let's talk about this because when I first saw this news, I had the same reaction you probably had. Wait, Qualcomm going back to Samsung for two nanometer chips after everything that happened before? Yeah, I checked it once, then I checked again, then again. And the more you look at what's happening in the chip market right now, the more this actually starts to make sense. So here's the situation in simple words. For the last few years, Qualcomm has been almost fully married to TSMC, every flagship Snapdragon chip, the powerful ones inside high-end Android phones, all coming from TSMC. Why? Because Samsung Foundry had problems, big problems, overheating, bad yields, chips running hot, phones throttling, battery life suffering. Everyone remembers the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 days. That damage was real. Because of that, Qualcomm slowly walked away from Samsung and trusted TSMC with everything. But now, fast forward to today, and the market looks very different. First big thing, TSMC is getting expensive, like really expensive. Every new node costs more than the last one. 3 nanometers costs more than 4 nanometers. 2 nanometers is going to cost even more. And when TSMC raises prices, companies like Qualcomm don't really have many options. You either pay up or you find another partner. Now add another problem on top of that. RAM prices are going up. Storage prices are going up. Phone makers are already struggling to keep prices from going crazy. Something has to give. And chip cost is a huge part of the phone price. So when people say, why would Qualcomm even think about Samsung again? The answer is simple. Money, control, and safety. Now here's where things get really interesting. At CES 2026, Qualcomm CEO Cristiano Amon basically confirmed what people have been whispering about for months. He said Qualcomm is in talks to return to Samsung Foundry for two nanometer Snapdragon chips. Not rumors, not leaks, straight from the CEO. He even said the design for these two nanometer chips is already done. That part is huge. You don't finish design unless you're serious. The goal is to bring these chips to market very soon, and Samsung is currently the priority partner for this. Let that sink in. Qualcomm is thinking about using Samsung's two nanometer process for future Snapdragon Elite chips, the same Elite chips that today are being made by TSMC on three nanometers. So what changed? Why trust Samsung again? Samsung Foundry has been quiet for the last two years, very quiet, and that's usually a good sign. It means they were fixing things instead of marketing. Those overheating problems from older Samsung-made Snapdragon chips? Reports say they're mostly gone. Yields are better, power efficiency is improving, and Samsung is finally confident enough to push hard into 2 nanometers. But the biggest proof that Samsung is back is not Qualcomm, it's Tesla. Samsung landed a massive $16.5 billion deal with Tesla to make their AI6 chip. Tesla doesn't play games with performance or reliability. If Samsung was still struggling, Tesla wouldn't touch them. That deal alone changed how the entire industry looks at Samsung Foundry. Now, let's talk about dual sourcing, because this is a big deal and most people don't talk about it enough. When Qualcomm relies only on TSMC, TSMC has all the power. Pricing, schedules, priority. Qualcomm has to accept whatever they get. But if Qualcomm splits production between TSMC and Samsung, suddenly the balance changes. Qualcomm gets leverage, better prices, better supply security. If one factory has issues, the other can help. This is huge, especially with global chip shortages still fresh in everyone's memory. And honestly, from Qualcomm's point of view, going back to Samsung is not about loyalty, it's about strategy. Samsung also wants this badly. Foundry is Samsung's weak spot compared to TSMC. Winning Qualcomm back would be massive for Samsung's image. It tells the world, we're not just catching up, we're competing. Now, about the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, reports say this exact chip could be made by Samsung on 2 nanometers, while TSMC is still on enhanced 3 nanometers. If Samsung pulls this off with good efficiency and heat control, that's a huge win. Because remember, smaller number doesn't automatically mean better chip. It only matters if yields are good and performance is stable. Samsung knows this. They can't afford another failure. For Samsung fans, this news is huge. This is the comeback story people were waiting for. Samsung Foundry is no longer just trying to rival TSMC. They're actually winning contracts again. For Android users, this could mean better competition, better pricing, and maybe even better performance per dollar. When foundries compete, everyone wins. 
Now, does this mean Qualcomm is fully leaving TSMC? No, not at all. This is not a breakup. This is diversification. Qualcomm is playing smart. And honestly, in today's market, this move makes perfect sense. So yeah, when you first hear Qualcomm returning to Samsung for two anometers, it sounds crazy. But when you look at rising costs, supply risks, Samsung fixing its problems, and massive deals like Tesla, suddenly it doesn't sound crazy at all. It actually sounds inevitable. And the next couple of years in the chip world are about to get very interesting.